Hello, Honors Physics kids. We are going to be doing some example problems today. So I have downloaded on the Google Classroom the set of example problems that I'd like to go over. Now, when I printed them off here at my house, it turned out really weird how it printed. But we are going to be using the formulas that I gave you, plus I add, I will be adding a couple more on for you to use. So let's start with this. Number one, autofocusing cameras emit a pulse of very high frequency, which is ultrasonic in nature. It travels to the object being photographed and it includes a sensor that detects the returning reflected sound. To get an idea of the time sensitivity of the detector, calculate the travel time of the pulse for an object. Okay, so what we are going to be doing is we are going to be looking for time. I'm going to take this away now and work up here. So number one, we are looking for a time. Formulas that we've used in the past to find time, we have a distance that's given to us and we have the speed of sound. And the speed of sound at room temperature that we will be using is 343 meters per second. It's a pretty straightforward question that we've got here. Now, for letter A, we have the distance is equal to 1.0 meters. So in order to find the time, we have to take the total distance that it travels and divide it by the speed of sound. But what I want you to realize, and this is something that's going to happen in some of our problems, we've got where it goes out, hits the object, and comes back. So the distance being one meter away the total distance it travels is two meters. This happens with echoes. So this is going to be two meters divided by 343 meters per second. And when you do that, you'll see the meters will cancel and the second will come up to the numerator. And that ends up being two divided by 343 is 5.8 times 10 to the negative three seconds. Now that would be 5.8 nanoseconds, but we're not gonna, milliseconds, I'm sorry, not nano, milliseconds, but we're not going to do that. The B part. Now what would you expect to happen as the distance doubles? The time should also double. Now recall that it's going two meters this way and two meters back, so this is four, divided by 343. And that will be about 1.2 times 10 to the negative two seconds. And there's question number one. Question number two. At a busy street corner, the sound level is 70 decibels. What is the intensity of the sound level there? Okay, now what we have to do is we have to use, if you look at this, we will be using this formula right here. And I will be expecting you to remember some Algebra 2 information. I know, everybody's excited about that. So what we have is we have 70 decibels. This is beta. And beta will be representing sound level. So beta is a sound level. We also, what we're trying to find is the intensity of the sound there. And we will be using the threshold of hearing 1.0 times 10 to the negative 12. This is a threshold of hearing. This is what we can barely make out. We have this formula that 
was given to you the log of the intensity of whatever's going on divided by the threshold of hearing is equal to the uh, sound level divided by 10. Excuse me. <coughs> what we do know is we know that the log, I is what we're looking for. I is what we're looking for divided by, this is going to be one times 10 to the negative 12. And that's a constant that will always hold true, I zero. That's the threshold of hearing. Beta was given to us as 70 over 10. Here's algebra two, guys. And some of you who have siblings that are taking honors algebra two, they're working with stuff like this right now, information like this right now. To undo a log, understand that the base of a log is 10. So what we have to do to undo a log is take 10 and raise everything to that x, 10 to that exponent. Oops, that's one times 10 to the negative 12. So this will be seven, correct? 10 to the 70 over 10. So we're raising both of those to the 10th power. Now what happens is 10 raised to the log, they undo each other, which will give us i over one times 10 to the negative 12 is equal to 10 to the seventh power. Now to get i all by itself, you multiply both sides by one times 10 to the negative 12. And that will end up being 1.0 times 10 to the negative five, remember those exponents add together, watts per meter squared. Okay, this is measured in watts per meter squared. And that's how you do that. Okay. I'd ask you right now if you had any questions, but you can't answer me. All right. Number three, I'll move this up. <clears throat> okay, number three. The sound level measured 30 meters away from a jet plane is 140 decibels. What is the sound level at 300 meters? And it says to ignore any reflection of sound that may take place. <clears throat> Okay, so what we do know is that at 30 meters, it is 140 decibels. And this is at D is equal to 30. I'm going to call this D1. <laughs> D2 that we're looking for is 300 meters. We know that I, well, we'll find out, I at 30. Let's go ahead and find that. That is going to be 140, if I set this up, is equal to 10 log of I over one times 10 to the negative 12. Take everything and raise it up to the 10. 10, raise everything up to that. So we have 10. Oops. What I'm going to do is divide this out. So I'm going to have, I, I'm skipping that step. 10 to the 14th is equal to 10 raised up to the log of i over 1 times 10 to the negative 12th. Now, when you solve this all out, what you're going to get is 10 to the 14th is equal to I 
over 1 times 10 to the negative 12th, or i is simply 10 to the second watts per meter squared. And what I didn't tell you is that the intensity is proportional, let me make a little fish, directly proportional to 1 over d squared. And this is a factor of 10. So what we do know is at 300, let me move this up again, at 300 meters, it will be 10 times as far away. So the intensity level will be 1 over 10 squared as far away, or 1 hundredth as much. So now beta is equal to 10 log of 1 over 10 to the minus 12, which is going to be equal to 120 decibels. Now it started out at 140, and you'll notice that that was 20 away from what we ended up with, which is a power of 10 squared. It, it relates to the two, okay? 100 relates to 20. It's a little bit confusing. I probably won't give you one like this on the test or quiz, but this one we can do. This one's a little bit more difficult to see. Oops, sorry guys. <laughs> Trying to get it so you can see it. Let me go that way. So that one's a little bit more difficult. And this is where logarithms are handy because intensity levels use decibels and deci in itself is powers of 10. And if you look at the chart in your in your handout, you'll notice that the levels, intensity, and the levels, sound levels, go in increments of powers of tens. Okay, moving on. Number four. Number four. Now you have in your PowerPoint, you have a section that has strings and it has uh, organs, pipes. So if you would refer to that, that will help you to do these problems. The number four says, a violin string is 0.32 meters long. What are the wavelengths of the fundamental in its first three overtones? Now, if you look at that, the fundamental frequency of a string looks like this when it's vibrating. What we see is this. So the length of this fundamental frequency is basically, now remember, this is a full wavelength. So what do we see here? We only see half a wavelength. So this is the fundamental. It's also called the first harmonic. You're saying I'm off the page. First harmonic. Let me fix this up a little bit. Okay. First harmonic. In order to find out what the wavelength is, I'm going to solve this, and it's going to be 2L. And if you recall, recall from the problem, L is equal to 0 0.32 meters. So in order to find the wavelength of the fundamental, and I'm just gonna put a little subscript one there for you, it's gonna be two times 0 0.32, which is 0 0.64 centimeters. So the first fundamental has a wavelength of 0.64 centimeters. Now when we go to do the second harmonic or the first overtone that's going to look like this. We're adding another loop to it. So 
So what we see here in this whole entire length, which is still 0.32, we see one entire wavelength. So the wavelength of the first overtone is actually just equal to 0.64. So this is the first overtone. And also considered the second harmonic. So I we were asked to find the wavelengths of the fundamental and the first three overtones. So we found the first overtone. Okay. Now when we do this, we're going to add another loop. One, two, three loops. It's still the same length, even though it doesn't look it. L is still 0 0.32. But now how many wavelengths do we see? We see one and a half, or three halves. So in order to find out what the wavelength of this um, third harmonic or the second overtone, it's going to be 2 thirds L, which is uh, 2 thirds times what L was, 0.32, I'm sorry for that little blurb. That ends up being about approximately 0 0.21. Straight up my centimeters. 0 0.21 centimeters. Or no meters, they're meters. Are they all meters? Yes, they are all meters. This is meters. I'm sorry, I know I probably confused some of you when I changed that over. It is meters. I apologize for that. This is the second overtone or the third harmonic. So the last one would be the third. This is the last one that we're doing on this one. So we're gonna see four loops. One, two, three, four. Still the same length, I apologize. Like I said, it's kind of hard to do. So L is still 0 0.32. But now, in this whole entire length, we see two wavelengths. So to find the wavelength of this fourth harmonic or third overtone, it is going to be one half of the length, which is one half of 0 0.32, which is 0 0.16 meters. This is the third overtone, and this is the fourth harmonic. So these are our answers. This is the first one. This is the second one. Look at that with a centimeter. This one is lambda three. And this one is this answer. So those are our answers to this question. Moving on, we have number five. Number five is asking us, now there's notes to this too in your packet. Let's go with the open-ended first. So when we have an organ, when we have open-ended, there's anti-nodes on each end where it's opened. So the fundamental looks like this. They're both open. These are both called anti-nodes. Here and here. And this point right here is called the node. And I probably should have told you that up here. When we're looking at there's a node, there's a node, there's a node. The fixed ends have a node. The open ends don't have a node. They have an anti-node. So these were all fixed ends. So that's why they look like that they do. Okay, so the first 
with the open-ended, if we look at this, we see that L was given to us as 26 centimeters. So let's just call L 0.26. Let's just stick with meters. L is 0.26 meters. Now this one's asking for not wavelengths, but it's asking for frequencies. Let's find out what the first wavelength is for this one. This one is going to be a half a wavelength. So L is equal to one half of lambda sub one. So lambda sub one, the wavelength for the first one is um, going to be two times 0.26 which is 0 0.52 meters. Now, in order to find out the first frequency, frequency is going to be equal to the speed of sound divided by the wavelength. In this case, 343 divided by the wavelength here of um, Point five two, I believe. And let's find out. I want to use my calculator to make sure that I'm right. I don't want to be wrong. So I'm going to take 343 and I'm going to divide it by 0.52 and I'm going to get 660. Approximately. So we're going to go with 660 hertz. Now, what is neat about this is we don't have to keep going through this process because to find the frequency of the first overtone, this is the fundamental. What's nice about this is that this is just multiples of the fundamental frequency. So the first overtone is two times the fundamental frequency, which is going to be 1320 hertz. The second overtone, F3, is going to be a multiple three times the fundamental frequency, which ends up being 1980. And then the third overtone, F4, is four times the fundamental frequency, and that is going to be 2640 hertz. So that was pretty straightforward. Now when we go to one end closed, this changes up a little bit. So what we see is at the closed end, we have a node. So the fundamental frequency is going to look like this. We see actually with the fundamental, we see one quarter of a wave. In order to find the fundamental, wavelength, we would take 4 times the length, and in this case it's 4 times 0 0.26, which is 1.04. And like we did before, we're going to find out what the fundamental frequency is by taking the speed of sound divided by that wavelength. And that's going to be 343 divided by 1.04, which is going to be approximately 330 hertz. Now, the difference between having one end closed is that the fundamental frequency is F1. The first overtone is actually going to be F3. 
and that is going to be 3 times F1, which is 990 hertz. The second overtone, F5 now, is going to be 5 times F1, which is 1650. And the third overtone is going to be F7. And that's going to be 7 times F1, which is 2310. We just have the odd overtones for these, and these are all measured in hertz frequencies. And that's the difference between the two. So you can look at those on your notes, and you can see that all of these formulas and all the pictures are there of the different overtones with these guys. I just didn't take the time to draw them all, but they're all drawn on the notes that you have for this. Okay, we have one more problem to do, number six. Number six. Maybe if I move this, that would work better. Okay, number six is a siren of a police car. Now we're talking about the Doppler effect here, and what you'll notice is when, if you're standing still and somebody is throwing something that is making a noise, as it gets closer to you, it sounds louder, and the frequency seems to change. And as it moves away from you, you'll notice that you don't hear it as well, it's not as loud. And that's true with sirens coming towards you and moving away from you. Um, I actually had a timer that I like to throw across the room and see if my softball or baseball players could actually catch it for me, but we are not going to be able to do that. Number six says, a siren of a police car at rest emits a predominant frequency of 1600 hertz. What frequency will you hear? So that's like a, a relative frequency. It's, it's a, an observed frequency that you notice. What will you hear if you are at rest and the police car moves at 25 meters per second toward you and 25 meters per second away from you? Okay, so if you'll notice I had uh, formulas five and six on here. Actually, yes, four and five. Four and five were the ones that um, we would be using for this because um, the source is moving. Well, wait a minute. Is the source moving? Nope, the police car is at rest. Okay. So the observer is moving towards a stationary source. The source is where the sound's coming from. So number six, let's see. We have, for letter A, we have the frequency of the source. That doesn't have any subscripts or postscripts or anything like that. This is just going to be 1600 hertz. That is the actual frequency. But what do we observe? So the source is actually stationary. Now, wait a minute. Okay, so the car is moving. The source is moving. I'm sorry. The source is moving. And the source is moving at 25 meters per second. When we're looking at these formulas, I gave you formulas for this for when um, the source, the observer is moving towards the source. So I have a couple more formulas I wanna give you. Um, so if you wanna write these formulas down, so I have the apparent frequency is equal to one, is equal to F, I apologize, divided by one, minus the speed of the source divided by the speed of the sound. Sorry, I appear like I don't know what I, I like. I'm a little flustered here. I just didn't give you these. So the source is moving towards stationary. Observer. And you can add this to your formula sheet as actually number six. 
and then number seven on your formula sheet, if you would add this one, it's going to be equal to F over one plus velocity of the source divided by the velocity of the sound. And the velocity of the sound, I think I put this on your notes, is usually equal to 343 meters per second, which is the speed of sound at room temperature. Okay, so these two formulas, now what's happening here is the source is moving away. From the stationary observer. Okay, getting back to the problem now. These two go, whoops, these two go on your card. I hope you can still see that. I apologize for crossing that off. This is a learning curve, people. And you all know for a fact that I am not perfect. So A, the source is moving toward. So that's going to be this number six. So in order to find this, I'm going to put F prime is equal to the force, or frequency, I apologize, 1600 hertz divided by one minus the speed of the source. The source is moving at 25 meters per second divided by 343. And when you do that all out on your calculator, you should get 1726 hertz. Now it appears to be more than what it actually is if it's standing still. As it's moving towards you, its frequency appears to be higher. And that makes sense, the difference between these two equations, because when you see the next part, it should be less as it moves away. So let's find out what that is when it's moving away. The only difference being between these two problems is the denominator has a plus sign. Now use your order of operations correctly on your calculator. This should be about 1491. Moving towards you, it appears to have a higher frequency. It's higher pitched. You can hear it coming as it's moving away it becomes lower than what it was. It appears to be not as loud, a lower sound as it moves away from you. Okay, I will be downloading some problems for you guys. It might take me a little while. This takes a long time for me to download from my phone, but it's been a pleasure working with you guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, take care, stay safe.